Welcome to today's episode of Special Tamil Shatner. Yes, William Shatner here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shatner Farm. Uh, uh, and uh, it's my great honor to be invited as guest host, <laughs> guest host for today's program. I'm sorry, I'm a little, a little bit, a little, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit uh, hungover. No, I'm not. Uh, it was Saturday night last night, but I wasn't out anywhere. I was digging the garden in the dark. That's the kind of thing I do on a Saturday night. I know, bizarre. Uh, anyway, yes, I'm the guest host today, and I'm sorry I was late because uh, getting Sean because I was, I was at the last minute decided to stick on some fake hair because I didn't think I looked young enough to be the original William Shatner because uh, I'm from the original 1960s episode, not when he's grey and fat. Uh, no, I'm skinny and still a little bit blondy. I managed to find these little... Uh, grout scrubbing, grout scrubbing brushes <laughs> in the hallway, which I just recently glued to my head using, of course, our number one sponsor. Still there, I can't get it right. yoo -hoo, look, it's dripping out, dripping out the side. So, uh, yeah, it all looks good. It's a good look. I might stick with this. Uh, welcome, welcome. I've just flown in, beamed in, beamed in with uh, my uh, faithful half, half human, half vulpine companion. You will live long and prosper, Dr. Spot. <laughs> Good dog, Spot. Uh, he's so logical. He always keeps me keeps me right. I'm very emotional, you see. But Spot has emotions as well. He just keeps them under wraps, as you can see. Never changes his facial expression. Uh, well, hopefully people can watch today, because last week I had a bit of a disaster. Uh, yes, it was the uh, Convict Show, and... Uh, yeah, I was uh, I was doing time, but I wasn't doing enough time. I only did 20 minutes before the whole thing collapsed. The Wi-Fi went, and then uh, I waited about a minute for it to, to sort itself out. It didn't, so I had to close it, close the show down. Well, it already closed itself down. It must have been really poor <laughs> last week, and start it again. Except nobody could see the second one I did, apart from me, um, occasionally when I try and find it. I've tried to post it and everything, and it doesn't work, so I don't know what's going on. Anyway, it was gold, it was pure comedy gold. The, the really sad thing actually was, though, it was uh, there was a poem that uh, Davy English, um, super fan of the, the show, had written, uh, which was very good about the previous week uh, when I did Chief Inspector Mikkelsen from Scoot, Scoot Squad. Uh, Scoot Squid, and um, it was very funny, and uh, it was lost, it was lost to the world because it was in the second half. Never mind, uh, we'll, do, we'll do another one of his poems soon. Anyway, uh, I know you're all tuning in desperate to hear the entire Tamil Shatner, uh, so I'm going to give it to you. No, I'm just going to give you the first few lines, actually, don't switch off. But uh, in the voice of James T. Kirk, James T. Alawa Kirk. I've got to get a Kirk pose. When Chapman Billies leave the street and Druthy Niebuhr's Niebuhr's meet, as market days are wearing late and folk begin to tack the gate while we sit boozing at the nappy and get him foo and unco happy. We think now on the long scout smiles that lie between us and our heim many, many star constellations away. Where sits our sulky sullen dame, even in, even in the future we have a sulky sullen dame at heim, uh, gathering her brows like gathering storm, nursing her wrath to keep it warm. Okay, not bad. It would get a bit boring if I did the whole thing. Uh, what we're going to do instead is give you non-stop Burns-a-thon. Uh, yes, it's a Burns-a-thon here today. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, Pat. I just saw your message. Oh, that's good. People are watching today. Karen, 
Hello, I hope you're still not in an ambulance with your mother. That was terrible. Sorry to read about that. Uh, that's that's uh, delays down in the hospitals in England. Um, uh, gosh, well, that's good to see these messages coming up because that means that this is going out live. Is that a good thing? Maybe not. Uh, anyway, yes, non-stop burns a thorn. We're going to start with um, Gimelof Bros. I've just had some bros, actually. In fact, normally I eat this on the show, but I was very hungry today. I've finished it. Look, not a drop left. I've had my bros. I've had my porridge. It's called Bros and Butter. I actually had Bros and Cream, which is a little bit, a little bit cheeky, a little bit middle class, but there we go. <laughs> this down a little bit because you can't see my accordion keyboard and all but many of you are very interested to see the fancy finger work there. Uh, maybe not. Uh, now I have to apologise for lack of anybody else on the show today. Yes it's just boring old me and my stuffed dog because it turns out the real dog Lola who's been lost in action for a couple of weeks well I finally find out. Uh, not from Maisie because she's never bothered to reply. Uh, that's a rumour. Uh, no from some friends that are staying in Maisie's flat. Um, because I went, I went up to investigate the case of the mysterious mis case of the missing doggy, uh, with my Sherlock Holmes hat on and pipe, which did surprise them at the front door. But they had seen my calendar, which Maisie has a copy of, so it wasn't a complete shock to them. They went, who recognise you underneath that costume? Oh, I'll tell you a story about somebody not recognising me yesterday. Actually, in just a minute. Uh, anyway, turns out Maisie has gone south. She has gone south for an unknown period of time, and she's taken the she's taken the blithering dog with her. Uh, she's gone to Cambridge to study a carpentry course. Isn't that so cool? She was doing. I know she was helping her dad do a loft conversion or something uh, like the end of last year down in Cambridge. So she's gone. She must have enjoyed it. She's gone to do a carpentry course. She can treat, teach me a bit of carpentry when I come back. Because I just make it when she comes back. Because I just make it make up. Hope she does come back anyway. So that's why there's no real dog here. The little treats are still over there waiting. Don't worry, they won't go off. Uh, she'll be back uh, in a few weeks, hopefully. Anyway, we've got Dr. Spot here. He's doing a grand job. That reminds me of that brilliant poem. Was it, was it Sid Kipper or one of these brilliant English poets that, that is very popular at English folk festivals? It used to be, anyway, 20 years ago, last time I played an English folk festival. Probably. And, uh, we get up and recite poetry in the middle of the, the gig or at the end of the night and these people absolutely love it. Uh, it was very funny. Uh, it, was, it was one poem called Spot of the Antarctic. Somebody will remind me who the poet is. I think it's Sid Kipper. It might be somebody else. Ivor somebody. That's another. I, not Novello. No, another one. Ivor Cutler. Might be Ivor Cutler. Or Sid Kipper. Anyway, sorry. It's Spot of the Antarctic and it's not, it's about how it wasn't Scott who was the first one to get to the North Pole. It was Spot, the lead dog in the sledge. <laughs> yeah, still still good advice at the North Pole or anywhere. Don't eat yellow snow. Don't eat snow this color. Right, uh, on with another one. Uh, Aphorn Kiss. Yes, you'd be very pleased to know that I'm not actually going to sing any of these today. <clears throat>
Beautiful. That was a form kiss. One tender kiss. Um, now I was saying, uh, uh, what was I saying about somebody? Oh, somebody didn't recognise me the other day without my costume on. Yes, well, it was yesterday. I was in the the grocers, as the as we quaintly call it, uh, the the vegetable shop, not the supermarket, no, just an actual genuine grocer shop. Up, uh, it's called Global Fruit. Actually, it's an excellent shop, full of lots of fruit and vegetables. Just up from the King's Theatre on the other side of the road. If any of you can, if you can, the locale in Edinburgh too, you know. And uh, I was, I was there. And who should I see coming down the street but my old mate who I hadn't seen for ages. Since in fact, since he played at my window probably about a year ago, but Steve Ketley, yes, the internationally famous saxophone player, and he's coming down the road with a big, big sort of tweed coat buttoned up right up to the collar. Uh, it's a bit girly like that. And his wife, and they came down, and I had my mask on because I was just about to go into the shop, and I didn't have any uh, other fancy clothes on, like I wasn't dressed like uh, Samuel Shatner, for example, and. Uh, he, did, he completely didn't recognise me. He came down. I was like, oh no, it's Steve Ketley. I better hide. But it was too late. He came right and he walked past. And, I, and that was, I was so black affronted that I went, excuse me. Hey, hey. He started making funny noises. And he turned around and I started going, ooh, ooh, like this. I don't know. It was the only thing I could think of doing. I had the mask on. He still didn't recognise me. He was turning around and going, oh no, it's a nutter. It's a nutter. I'm going to walk faster away. And then suddenly he clicked who it was. He went, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry I didn't recognise you with, without your costume on. <laughs> I've just signed my wife. I've just signed my wife, Jane. That, uh, you know, I, you can't tell any, anyone who's with a, without a mask on. He's English. Um, oh, Londoner. He's a Londoner. He's, yeah, that was my, uh, what was the Mary Poppins guy? George Seagal. Was it? No, that was Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Ah, oh, you know who I mean. Uh, diagnosis murder. Yeah, yeah, terrible cockney accent. Anyway. Steve's big birthday today. I don't know how old, 61 maybe? 62? Sorry if it's 61. Steve, it might do you an injustice there. 62. Anyway, he said to ask me to do a shout out on my show because he knows how popular it is. So everyone in the world will know it's his birthday tomorrow, except, of course, he said he wouldn't probably be watching because he doesn't watch it, uh, except for the ones that he's on, which has only been one so far. I need to get him back on, actually. So happy birthday, Steve, uh, and have a big, a big parp on your um, your saxophone uh, to celebrate. Yeah, saxophone invented by Mr. Sax. Isn't that a funny thing? You'd think it was just that was just made up, but no, it was really invented by Mr. Sax. Imagine if I had invented it, it would be called the Brechinophone. Doesn't doesn't have such a good ring, does it? No. I could invent something else though. Uh, I just need to think about it. Yeah. Uh, are you speaking about uh, naming things? Tamashanter, right? For those of you who don't don't get this. Right, if, you, if you've ever watched, some of you aren't maybe sci-fi fans, I love sci-fi, Star Trek, the original Captain James T. Kirk, his name, of the name of the actor is William Shatner, right? And it's a little bit similar to Sh Shanter, if I were careful what I say here. I could get my tongue terribly twisted and, and get the show banned forever. I'm surprised that hasn't been already. Uh, yeah, Tam O'Shanter, of the famous poem, this hat was named after him because it's the kind of hat he wore, so... It's, it's Tam O of Shanter. Shanter was the name of his farm, Tam O'Shanter Farm, down in Dumfries and Galloway, where he lives. And because he was he wore a hat like this, this is what the hat's been called, the Tam O'Shanter. So I'm wearing a Tam O'Shanter, except I'm William Shatner. Tam O'Shanter. Get it? Right, okay. Should have, shouldn't have taken me that long to explain that to some of you. Come on, guys. Come on. You need to do some catch-up on Prime or Netflix here. Watch these old episodes. Anyway, of course, William Shatner has been shot. Shatner has been shot into the sky, as James, uh, as uh, Sean Connery would say. <laughs> Shatner's been shot into the sky. Uh, recently, in Elon Musk's his little capsule. Yeah, not quite as big as the... Uh, the uh, deck of the en Starship Enterprise. It was just a tiny little bubble, but anyway, he was he was so um, he was so overcome when he, with the being in space real for real. When he landed, um, he was he was he burst into tears. So that wasn't a very Captain Kirk thing to do, mind you. It's emotional. Kirk's emotional. Spot on the other hand. Mm -mm. Mm. Uh, so yeah, but why didn't they leave him in space? That was a big question. I mean, he's not got much of a career left. He's ninety something. How many? Oh, mind you, he's still doing. He's doing some show on one of these weird channels, um, Strange Events with Captain. T no, with William Shatner. 
Uh, anyway, on with the songs. Right. Um, oh, birthday shout out. So it was my dad's birthday yesterday. I'm going out for a birthday tea with him tonight because we have to split the family for uh, two two birthdays because of the social distance, not social distancing, restrictions. You know, we only have three households. So there's three households met yesterday and another three households met today, but the common household being my mum and dad. So that's cool. It's just a shame that the restrictions end tomorrow, but uh, can't wait for that. So, uh, yeah, it was his birthday yesterday, 82. Pretty impressive. Well done, Dad. Right, here's one for you. Uh, whistle over the lay boats. <laughs> Whistle over the layout means don't need to worry about the small things. Whistle over the rest of it, you can go and whistle. Um, good advice, good advice. Now, uh, where is Wendy Weatherby when you need her? Uh, last year on this show, um, that seems a long time ago, but God, it's gone by quick. Last year on this show, I had Wendy Weatherby uh, as, a, as an old wifey uh, coming to my window. An old wifey from olden times, I mean, not an old wizened wifey. Uh, no, she's looking radiant, as always. Um, it's by her 60th year, last year, 60th birthday. God, that's amazing. I, I'm trying to unlock time as well, what a shame. Uh, anyway, we'll have a big party for her this year. Wendy would normally be joining me here, although I never bothered to ask her, because I knew she was already booked to do the Plockton Burns weekend, which is up where we teach in the high school at Plockton, the music school, sorry. National Centre for Excellence in Traditional Music. It just trips off the tongue, doesn't it? Important. and she's up there all this weekend. Uh, I'll be going up there later tonight, actually, after Dad's birthday, because uh, I've got to teach there tomorrow. I'll bring her back. So I took her up on Friday, and I brought, I'm bringing her back tomorrow. I'm just like, I'm like her coachman. She'll get in the back of old Meg, and we'll gallop off down the road to Edinburgh Tune together. Uh, yeah, so she's got, she's got other fish to fry. So I'm just doing my uh, show on my own here, which is always a little bit hairy. Uh, uh, call the house, call the house. I'm just looking at my little list of songs here, burn songs that I know. They're all over the keyboard, these burn songs. Gotta have big hands. <laughs>
up there in the end. Cordios, that means um, uh, call, get the attention of the sheep. Yes, call the yows, call to the ewes. Here, sheepy, sheepy. <laughs> mint sauce, mint sauce. No, that's not going to attract them, is it? No, that's going to that's going to make them run away. No, you need a cut. You need a collie. That's what you need a collie. Or a dog on wheels. Come by, come by, come by. Oh, look at that. Amazing, amazing responses. Uh, okay. Amazing responses. Uh, yes, your responses are amazing. Thumbs down, thumbs up. Oh, thumbs up. Right. Uh, from that one. John Ann. Oh, no, coming through the rye. Coming through the rye. So that almost sounds naughty. <laughs> any burn suppers to play at this year um, I'm not sure if there's many going ahead with uh, but the restrictions will be off uh, uh, tomorrow which is the 24th that's one day before burns night so uh, who knows somebody might be planning a last-minute burn supper but I have actually got a wee gig with Wendy playing on uh, burns night in the Murrayfield Hotel uh, just while people eat their dinner which will presumably be haggis um, so that's that's good uh, but that's it for this year, yeah. Anyway, lucky to get anything. Uh, so these, these these songs will come in very handy, although Wendy will no doubt be singing them in completely different keys, uh, which will be a little bit stressful for me. But anyway, I can handle it. I can handle it. Here's one that uh, she's definitely going to be doing. My love is like a red, red rose. <laughs>
look like red, red, rose. Rose, rose. Red, red, raw. Uh, to follow your honest, sonsy face. Great chieftain of the puddin' race. Aboon the ma, you take your place. Pinch, tripe, or therm. Wheel are you worthy of a grace as langs my arm. Yeah, just to let you know I could do that one as well, but I'm not going to do the whole thing because that would be a little bit cruel. I don't have a haggis here this year anyway. Last year I had a haggis and everything. It was addressed, it was already addressed to Mr. R. Burns. I had a little label and a stamp in it. It's very funny. It addressed to the haggis. <laughs> anyway, I thought I couldn't do that again. Hence the um, Shatner. Camel Shatner. That was funny at the time. Right, next up we've got. Okay, oh, next up, speaking of Up in a Wall. Up in a Wall, Willie, with Ken Muir. Ken Muir's Up in a Wall. <laughs> as well my dad was 82 yesterday but uh, I've got another another friend not family member friend who's 80 today and uh, I'm pretty sure she won't be watching either but hello and happy birthday Sheila McLean my skating dance partner of 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 of, of your of yesteryear before um, the, the Murrayfield ice rink was shut down I was actually on the ice for the first time this year and the first time in about a year uh, in uh, Kirkcaldy, it's got a wonderful ice rink that uh, Cat, Cat Craig, uh, fan of the show, kindly pointed out to me, uh, was open for public skating again. So I went there last week, it was brilliant to be back on the ice, just me, well a few other people, but um, no dancing, no dancing, just me solo, freestyle, and uh, yeah, a little bit a little bit wibbly wobbly, but got back into the swing of it. Uh, anyway, Sheila used to teach uh, skating there years ago and she's a, a regular and she, she spends half her time teaching me how to do things properly. Point, point, panache, panache, you're not a footballer. Um, that kind of, these kind of helpful hints. Anyway, it's her 80th birthday today. I'm going to pop in and say a wee happy birthday to her later as well. All these people that are uh, 80 or 80 something, amazing. I mean, amazing to get that age anyway. Never mind after, during a pandemic. Wow, total virus dodgers. It's not like they did anything to, to deserve to dodge it anyway, because they're like, they don't care. Like, uh, I, was stand, I was standing out in the, the cold at my parents' window during one lockdown, and they're going, we're freezing, just come in. Instead of speaking, this window goes, I'm not coming in. Come in, it's freezing, we're going to catch a death cold. I'm not coming in. So, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't care. Um, I guess when you get to that age, it's just like, pff, seen it all anyway. Uh, anyway, well done to all of them for still being here. <laughs> right, what's next? Uh, John Anderson, my job. <laughs> Bye. 
Rav Anderson like Joe. My Joe means my love, uh, not my Joseph, uh, because that would be strange uh, for a lady to be called Joseph. Back in those days, not so not so strange now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a, an odd lang sign, of course, that's uh, uh, she'd all the contents be forgotten, never brought to mind. She'd all the contents be forgotten. Never, oh, it's not that, but she for old lang sign, my Joe for old lang sign. We've taken a cup of kindness yet for old lang sign. So for old lang sign, my my Joe. And most people sing my dear. It's not in the original. It's my Joe, which means my dear. So if you just correct that, please. Next time you're singing it, oh, you're probably not even singing the right words anyway. You're probably just going the same as everybody else. La, 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 la. You never bothered to learn it, have you? No. Oh, it did take me a wee while to learn it actually, but um, I, once I got offered the chance to sing it on stage one, so you can bet I learned the words. Uh, <laughs> on stage, my, my big stages, believe it or not. Uh, in front of thousands, thousands, and um, it's amazing what a wee bit of reverb on the microphone can do. Oh, Lizzy Lindsay, Lizzy Lindsay, this is a great song. In fact, I'll do the Eddie Reader version. What is it with all that waving of the hands? That's, me. That's my chances of a gig where they're gone. Nice segue from that straight into Green Grow the Rasher Zone. Lindsay. Oh, you're going to the healings, Lizzie Lindsay. Oh, what a waste I could have sung it. Never mind. 
next year. Uh, we're going to do some exciting tunes now. Uh, well, it's another song. Uh, what's it called? Coming through. No, I've done that. Coming through the rye. I've done that one. Hang on. Whistle over the label. Label. I've done that as well. I've done all of these. Yes, I have. Oh my goodness. Uh, all right. I think I've actually run out of tunes. Never mind. Let's play. <laughs> Let's play something just completely random then. Uh, oh, at flowers of animal. <laughs> Spoiled one I missed. We need to get on to it soon because this isn't going so well. The Flowers of Edinburgh, sort of. Uh, yeah, I missed one now. Man's a man for all that. about clean pea stray as well. <laughs> It's not exactly as if you can run out of Burns material anyway, there's like over 350 songs. The guy was prolific in his only 37 years of life. He managed to write over 400 poems, every one of them a belter, and uh, and over 350 songs. Most people don't realise that how many songs he wrote as well. There's, uh, there's millions, there's lots of ones that are a bit more obscure. And there's, there's a naughty ones as well, maybe do that, a late night naughty Burns show uh, one day. Uh, yeah. What that's, what's that called? Not the Jolly Beggars. That's the that's the other one. That's another sort of sweet uh, songs. What do you call the naughty ones? Oh, go on. Never mind. You can tell me. Tell me in your uh, your comments. Well, that's it. Made it through to the end of the show. Hopefully this week without any uh, interference. Wi-Fi interference. That is. Oh, by the way, they're inserting. They're inserting. They're inserting gigabyte broadband up the rear back passage of my building. It's very painful. 
they're worried about asbestos getting it to the top floor so it's only got as far as the back, the back passage so far but uh, eventually I may have super warp speed 12 uh, one gigabyte uh, Wi-Fi here but uh, not, not yet anyway as long as it keeps going keep keep winding that handle Scotty <laughs> we've got our got our engineer uh, Scotty down below uh, more part more steam McPhail more steam uh, thank you so much for watching if anybody was you know no you must have been I saw comments there uh, it's all little people it's all little bubbles little faces people watching it didn't look particularly happy but they're just still photos it's just whatever your profile picture is isn't it so it's not it's not how you look at the minute which is just as well I suppose I wouldn't like a little picture of me going up on the internet how I looked every minute it'd be very confusing for people so thank you for me Captain James Tiberius T T James T for Tam Tammy James Tammy O'Shatner and my loyal uh, dog who will live long and prosper uh, Dr Spot we say uh, well, what, does, what, does, what does Captain Kirk say Captain Alwa Kirk uh, he's, what does he say boldly go boldly go where no boldly go where no accordion player has gone before this week there's good advice for you ok thanks for watching folks bye oh whoa, geez, that was a tough show can't remember all these burns all these burn songs uh, oh my god, I forgot to do the Starship Enterprise getting attacked. Phasers! Whoa! Ooh. Hold on, Spot! In fact, I'll hold on to you. Whoa! Whoa! Those blasted Klingons set phasers to burns! Oh my god, is that still on?